What are quantum fields? Wouldn't you like a personal explanation? Theoretical physicist Thomas Gaidasik, docent at uh, Vilnius University, Lithuania, gave such a personal exposition to John Harland, uh, leader of the Math for Wisdom Physics Study Group, when John visited me in Lithuania. And so these are introductory remarks. Uh, we uploaded an earlier video where we discussed our motivation. And here, uh, Thomas uh, explains uh, some of the difference between quantum mechanics and quantum fields, how quantum fields relates uh, uh, classical fields, operators acting on a vacuum, creation and annihilation operators. I'm still struggling, but you may not. If you want even more personal exposition, leave a comment and you may join us. I am Andrus Kulikauskas. This is Math for Wisdom. So when I have quantum mechanics, what I have in principle is I have a question that is a definite initial part going over a final, so initial going into a final state and calculating what are the probabilities, right? Does, does it make sense? Yes. So, no. so yes. Yes. what is the difference to quantum field theory? In quantum field theory, my initial state is now something that depends as an initial state, for instance, on x, t, particles, and so on. And we want to write it in exactly the same simplified way that an initial state goes into the final state that has the same dependencies. But that means that we have a generalized initial state and how do we treat it? And that's one of the questions and one of the ideas is to write the initial state as having now operators. So I write it now as creation operators onto a vacuum. And all my dependence is now coming in here. In the operator in the creation operator and unifying the vacuum. So a ground state. And the ground state in principle could be general. If I really go to particle physics and want to have all the success, my ground state will really be the vacuum that we experience as a vacuum that is the same for everybody in, here goes in special relativity, GR or so on. So the vacuum is the background on which we do everything. So there's no assumptions about the system. They're all in the, I mean, all, everything is in the operator. Yes. In some sense, everything is an operator. Now how to define it as an operator. So quantum field theory now has different ways of doing it. This is then the canonical way, having here the operators defining everything. Operators are, well, not nice things. Nice, not nice things in the sense that, well, how do I describe an operator? If I do it mathematically, it becomes, I have to describe the space on which it interacts, on, on which it acts, what it does. It can go long, long list of what I have to do. And the question is, are these all necessary things for discussing what I want to have in quantum field theory when I have, for instance, particle scattering or describing that particles come together and can form a bound state. If I want to have it, some of the parts that I have to use to define an operator are not needed anymore. So quantum field theory has an abstraction layer that says instead of the operators here, I go to uh, quantum fields. And that is now a generalization that includes now also special relativity or general relativity. 
So what it does, quantum field theory borrows from quantum mechanics the ideas that I can use operators to describe actions, that I can ask for things, are they important or not? But from classical field theory, the idea that I can describe my whatever I have on a background that has some symmetries. So here come, with special relativities or general relativities or whatever, come in all the symmetries that I require for my system to have. In some way, quantum fields do the same thing as classical field theory, so that I can treat classic quantum fields like classical fields, for instance, with either Lagrange equations or the Lagrange formalism. Right? But now comes a difference from classical to quantum fields, that in classical fields, the field is now the object that I want to describe, I want to find, but here the quantum field is the carrier of the particle that I want to discuss. So the particle that I want to discuss is a quantum operator that is carried by the field, and I can use then the quantum operator to discuss what is really happening. So my quantum field can be understood that it's there all the time, but I have only a particle if a creation operator acts on the unified vacuum of everything. No? Say that again, please. <laughs> the vacuum mm -hmm. is, what does vacuum mean? It's just a blank uh, slate on which you're going to act or... In some way, I mean, quantum, a quantum vacuum means that it is a state that I don't even want to define, but it is unique and unified for everything around. I use the same vacuum when I do deal with particles in quantum field theory for every particle. I mean, there's no distinction which vacuum is it for which particle. It's all the same. Oh, it's the same for all. It's and the it's same unique vacuum for all. all the same. And if somebody else looks at the vacuum, he has to see the same symmetries that I see in the vacuum. And the vacuum symmetries are basically the Poincaré invariants of the vacuum, of the background. So it means I can do translations in time, in space, rotations, so-called boosts, and the vacuum looks the same. So I've been talking with John about what periodicity, and so this quote-unquote vacuum for us would be the orthogonal matrices, let's say they're 16 I by 16. I don't know. I don't but this idea is that to. there's a state that these operators are acting on, and that's where all the symmetries are located. And it's the same state for whatever you do. It's okay. Okay. That's just... Okay. So, mm -hmm. so classical field theory, the fields are actually the object that you're studying. Mm -hmm. right. you're, you're studying this you know, modification or this yes. function of space time that, mm -hmm. that, that changes over time. It's got this kind of evolution, time evolution, and it, it actually is the thing, the object of study. In quantum field theory, the field is viewed, is it viewed as a carrier for a particle? It's viewed as a pre-particle? Um, I mean, uh, I'm thinking of wave functions. Yes. Now, what, is the, yeah, what, is the, what is the... What is the... But what means a wave function? I mean, here, I want to abstract. The field is not used as analyzing what is the field now. We don't need it. The only thing that we need is that if we want to get one type of particle, we need this type of field. But this type of field we can write down with a name, and that can stand for the particle. But the particle is not there if the field is there. The particle is only there if the creation operator of this field acts on the vacuum. Okay. So I would say that the field can be understood as being part of the definition of the vacuum. Just its possibility for existence. 
Well, and when, when people talk like about a quantum foam or something, then this would be no. the same? No, that's something? No. I mean, I wouldn't say that the feet <laughs> represents a quantum foam. Okay. So, so... Not the field, but, uh, but uh, I meant like the, the vacuum. Yes, maybe. Okay. So the field mm -hmm. is... There is going to be a mathematical description mm -hmm. of the field. Yes. In terms of E and M or or uh, or uh, Yang Mills or yes. whatever it happens to be exactly, and that's going to. But we're not going to study that. We're going to study some. It's it's going to be processed through this creation operator or an annihilation operator. It's it's going to no. maybe constrain the con no 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 constraints on it. I mean the constraints for the feeds are like in feed theory what type of feeds I have. Okay. From these types of feeds we will get what the propagator can be and the propagator describes now how we think that a particle excitation of the feed could travel around. Okay. But we want to abstract from that in some sense too. So I'm trying yeah. to get a map of the con con yes. uh, conceptual frameworks. Okay there's a field and mm -hmm. we are going to describe it mathematically. It's yes. going to have some symmetries Yes. It's going to describe the symmetries of this vacuum, I guess, or the symmetries, no, of, the symmetries of the vacuum are just going to be right. It yeah. will describe the symmetries of the field, which are not necessarily symmetries of the vacuum. Okay. I mean, the, the fields don't have usually translational invariance. If I have a particle at one point, it's no, not course. at the of same. Course, yes. So uh, it depends. Okay. And then when I say that the field equations will describe how particles tend to move, these field equations will turn out to be the main tool for seeing how particles can move from one interaction to the other. But what means interaction? I mean, I want to come at some point to that too. Okay. So, so. You had the picture of operators acting on a vacuum. Now you introduce this idea of the quantum field, and so then, how does that re is this replace? Well, I'm just still asking, like, how does how what's the difference between the quantum field and the operator acting on the vacuum? The field represents then this operator smeared in space and time, and is part of it. So I can write the quantum field as the Fourier integral over particle creation operator with amplitude plus annihilation operator with different amplitude of all the pieces integrated over momentum, for instance. So it will be one part of the representation, but not identically the same. So it will be part of how to manipulate. I mean, it sounds like the overall, like the context you're structuring for all of these annihilation or creation operators and that context is like the potential energy or the no oh, no okay no no okay you in any case you're going to give us an example of of how we can in, in, fit, a, fit a one of these operators together with a field i right? i hope i can write it down for instance for the quantum field mm -hmm. if i make the simplest example and write down a scalar field there's one way of writing it down. This is getting very interesting, but we're going to leave this for the next episode. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video. Please uh, go to mathforwisdom.com or simply read the description to this video to learn how you can join our Math for Wisdom discussion group and our study groups. Thank you for liking this video, for subscribing to this YouTube channel, and for supporting Math for Wisdom through Patreon. I became a Math for Wisdom Patreon supporter. I went to the webpage, patreon.com, found Math for Wisdom, and after just a few minutes of filling a few things out, boom, I was a Math or Wisdom Patreon supporter. You can do it too.